Good evening, everyone, and welcome to New Arts Exchange Online. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mercé. I'm the public program producer here, and it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce uh, Kim Thompson today. Kim's an artist illustrator based in Nottingham, and she has conceived two life drawing workshops for uh, NAE, building on the themes of movement, identity, and personal narrative within the work of Phoebe Boswell. Unfortunately, Phoebe's exhibition uh, couldn't open uh, this year, but we're looking forward to opening soon again in January, so make sure you come and visit. Today's workshop uh, is an introduction to traditional life drawing using portraiture, mark making, and automatic drawing techniques. Kim will tell you more about it, uh, and I just want to run through a couple of notes first. So while delivering content online, New Art Exchange strives to create a safe and secure environment where guests, staff, and audiences can work together confidently and in mutual respect. The disadvantage of online events uh, is that we can't see you, so if you do have any questions for Kim or about the session in general, throughout the session, please let us know using the chat feature on YouTube. So we really hope you enjoy the workshop this evening, and without further ado, I'm handing the metaphorical microphone to Kim. Thank you, Mercé, and thank you all for joining me today, or tonight rather, for Life Drawing. Um, I wanted to open by just saying that this session, the point of it is that I'm hoping that I can give you some tips to take away with you um, to begin to enjoy drawing. And I think probably it's going to be a mixed group of people. And the point of these is not to kind of shame anybody into feeling like they can't draw. I want you to forget everything you've learned at school. Any teacher that told you you couldn't draw, we're going to have fun. And I just want people to feel confident about making marks on paper and perhaps be more kind of confident in the way that you depict the body and that help you to realize that there's lots of different ways to draw the human form and one isn't better than the other there's lots of ways and they're all really valid so hopefully we'll take that way with you um, I'd like to begin by just making sure that you've got all of your materials so I know that the new art exchange did actually send some packets of materials out for you very generously um, so you should have some paper some something to draw with and if you've got your own things that you want to draw with then that's fantastic incorporate those um, and I think before we begin just make sure your space is set up so if you're kind of um, drawing in a space at home make sure that this isn't going to be a particularly messy session we're mostly doing sort of like line based drawing so just making sure that you're comfortable in what you're wearing that your space you know you're comfortable with uh, I'm drawing in charcoals and just that you know that isn't going to kind of get you out of the zone if you're worried about making a mess um, some of the other tools that we've got, so we should have paper, something to draw with, or tools in general to draw with. Um, it's helpful for the actual life drawing sessions, which will come slightly after our um, icebreaker session, to perhaps tape your page down. So if you've got some tape that you can secure your page to the surface with, that would be great. If you don't have that, don't worry. Um, we also need... Uh, I think it would be good to have a mirror for part of the session, if you don't have that, again, we can work around it. But if you have that to hand, then that's fantastic. So to begin, um, we're going to just do a bit of an icebreaker drawing exercise. And I'm going to actually employ um, my lovely model, Tuck, and also Merce from the New York Exchange to help me out to demonstrate this bit of the, the session. And it's an exercise called automatic drawing. Uh, you may have experienced or done this before and not known what it's called, but it basically involves a style of drawing where you're kind of removing one of the sensors, which is essentially your, your sight. So we're going to be drawing without actually looking at the thing that we're drawing, which kind of doesn't make sense probably and sounds a bit daunting. But the whole point of this exercise is to break down those barriers and to make you realise that sometimes when you kind of take the pressure off yourself of looking very intensely at something, then you kind of almost free yourself up just to make marks and have fun and not be afraid to kind of make a mark on a clean white pa paper page. So I'm going to talk you through how we're going to do that, and I'm going to employ my assistants around me to kind of demonstrate so you can see. And I'll be doing a bit of myself as well. So we're going to have a camera set up so you can see what I'm doing all the way through the session. Um, so for the first part, the automatic drawing, if you could make sure that you've got a clean sheet of paper, and I'd like you, I think you should have enough, but ideally I want you to draw on, for each session, each bit of the session, start on a new piece of paper. Um, and we've also got a Spotify playlist for this entire session, which if you want to begin that now, you can do. It's at, um, did we have a link to it? Yeah, we've got a link to it, sorry. <laughs> so the link to it is gonna be put into the YouTube chat, I think. If you want to just find it yourself, which I think you also can, it's just NAE Live Drawing, and it's by Kim Thompson. 
I've tried to put together something a little bit kind of quiet and subtle and dreamy. If you hate the whole playlist, feel free to turn it off and put on your own music. But <laughs> I won't be offended, I won't know. But I do find it's quite nice to have some sort of background noise while I'm drawing. You may find that you just want the silence, so that's just there as an option for you. If you want to begin that now, that's fine. Um, I think I normally would begin that sort of thing during the live drawing, but it's totally up to you. So for this part of the session, if you could grab your first sheet of plain paper, I'm going to do the same. So I've just got a plain sheet of A4 there, which I'll position, hopefully, so you can see it. And what we're going to do, first of all, and I'm going to time you on this, which isn't to kind of make you feel restricted or to um, pressure you. It's almost to kind of relieve some pressure. It'll make more sense as we go along. But I'm going to describe to you, um, I'm going to tell you to draw something, and I'm gonna, I want you to try and draw that with your eyes closed or just not looking at the page. And it's really important that you don't cheat for this because the whole point of the exercise is that we're all going to create something which is purely just with instinct. So we're just drawing completely from our imaginations or from our memories, objects that we kind of are familiar with, but we can't see. So everybody's going to be on the same sort of page in terms of our abilities. There's, there's not going to be things that are better just because you've had training in the arts before. We're all going to be making something that's kind of a bit silly, but also fun and a valid piece of art. So, Merce and Tuck, if you've got your paper ready and your materials to draw with, and I'll get set up too. And the first thing I want you to draw for this exercise, and it should take no longer than a minute, so I'll be sort of s keeping an eye on the time. It probably won't even take that long. But I want you to close your eyes, and on your page, as big or as small as you want, I want you to try and draw a flower. So, however you, before you begin, picture the sort of flower that you'd like to draw. So, in your mind, what kind of elements does a flower have? that enable you to know that that is a flower, if that makes sense. So think about the main assets that a flower has that make it a flower, and try and envision that when your eyes are closed. And then if you get your pen to paper, and I'll start kind of vaguely timing you while we do this. So if we begin, close your eyes, and begin now drawing a flower. an eye on Merce and Tuck to see if they're done yet. <laughs> and stop. I think both my lovely assistants are done with their flowers. So, so you should have something that kind of looks like a flower. Do you have something like that? Are you too happy to show what you've just created? Can we have a look on this? If you could position it on the table. I you guys grab Tux as well to, so we can see them both. <laughs> so as you can see, I think we've all got very passable flowers there, haven't we? You can tell if you were to present that to somebody, you'd know that it was a flower, wouldn't you? And you did that with your eyes closed, both of you. I was checking. So <laughs> hopefully you've got something at home that's kind of similar. So now you understand what the exercise is all about. I'm going to move on and um, get you to do another drawing using the exact same principle but we're going to make it a little bit more difficult in terms of the, the thing that I want you to draw. So if you get a fresh sheet of paper, I'm going to get one too. Move that out of the way. And for this one, um, I think we can move on to something which everybody should know what it looks like. I'd like you all to have a go at drawing a cat next. So, same principle, again, just, I think it, it makes it a little bit kind of easier if you, again, just think about the elements of that, the thing you're drawing that make it what it is. So, for example, a cat, what is it that makes it a cat? I would suggest, perhaps, whiskers, two little pointy ears, cute little nose. So, think about those elements before you draw it and try and envision a cat. If you've got a cat at home, think about its face, try and envision that just with your eyes closed and don't try and rely on trying to create a fantastic cat picture, just getting down the main information that if you show that picture to somebody, they could say, yes, that looks like a cat, or yes, that is a cat. So once again, get your paper ready, a new sheet of paper, ideally, and your drawing material. And similar sort of timing. I'll be keeping an eye on Mercedes, Mercedes and Tuck just to see how long you kind of need on this. And I'm going to do it myself as well. And mine will also be really, really bad. So <laughs> hopefully that will show you that Having a background in art doesn't make you kind of any better or worse at this exercise. So beginning from now, get your 
implement that you're drawing with ready, and let's have a go at drawing a cat with your eyes closed. Let's go. I'm just watching these two have a go. <laughs> Lots of giggles in the studio. Okay, and stop. So let's have a look at everyone's cats. You can see mine on the screen there. I don't know if you can tell <laughs> what that is. <laughs> and we're just going to have a look at Merce and Tuck's cats. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> oh, Merce was feeling confident. They've both gone for the full cat, Merce and Tuck. These are actually better than mine, I'm just going to say. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. I think, are you sort of surprised that you've managed to achieve something that looks like a cat? And it's interesting as well, I think, doing this exercise, sometimes if I was to ask you to draw a cat from life, I imagine you'd stress over it and you'd spend lots of time deliberating and worrying that it wasn't quite right. So I think this is a really e interesting exercise in terms of just showing you that once you kind of remove that boundary of the lack of confidence or kind of not believing that you can do something that looks exactly as it's supposed to, then you can sometimes end up producing something that's quite, you know, it's completely valid and quite recognisable. I think these cats are actually better than mine and I do opt for a job, so <laughs> it's just to prove. Um, so I think we'll do one more of these and then we're going to move on to the next stage of this um, sort of icebreaker drawing challenge. So hopefully at home you're following along and understanding and it will make sense and managing to keep up. So if we could each just get one more sheet of paper, a fresh one again. And for this one, um, I think for this one, I'm going to get you to choose the item that you want to draw yourself. So it could be, could be anything, you know, perhaps something that is of significance to you, yourself. Um, I think we'll stick with objects and animals for now, because I want to move on to draw faces after this part. But this kind of should give you a sense of the way that the, the thing works. And I think if you think of something that perhaps you see every day that maybe is easy for you to conjure in your mind, then try and draw it and then we'll see if we can guess what each other have drawn. So let's move on to the next part of the exercise. And if you think of something, so just take a couple of seconds to kind of think of an item that you want to try and depict with this same exercise. And one little tip that I'm going to give you that I find really useful, and I think Merce and Tuck have been doing that a little bit with theirs by the looks of it, is try not taking your... Um, your drawing tool off the page and see if that makes it any easier for you. Because one of the things that with this exercise is once you take your implement off the page, then you sort of lose where you are and things end up all over the place. So that might be something that you find useful. And I think that will come in handy for the live drawing that we're going to do later. So once you've thought of your thing, I've thought of one. Um, let's go ahead, get a pencil the paper. And we'll do about the same time frame, so maybe sort of 30 seconds to a minute. So when you're ready, let's begin. Mine is actually really backfired. I've just looked at it. <laughs> I was really confident in what I was drawing. But <laughs> I think I'm going to be defeated in this challenge, which proves my point again, so it's good. So, Merce and Tuck, do you feel that you're finished? Cool, let's have a look at what you've done. You definitely can't tell, but I was going for an elephant there. So <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, these are amazing. Let's just hide mine and look at <laughs> Merce and Tuck's. So, we've got a duck and a guitar have we got there yeah yeah these are amazing so yeah I think that's really proved my point actually that automatic drawing is a really w useful way of just kind of if you feel unconfident about making art or if you kind of don't know where to begin sometimes just kind of having fun with it and removing all the pressures of creating something that looks photorealistic can kind of end up with you producing quite an interesting quite nice simple piece of art so I think we kind of all have been taught, especially in school, that you know, oh, if you can't depict this thing exactly as it is, then it's rubbish. But I don't think that's true. And I think you'll find a lot of kind of abstract 
picture making is created almost in this way on this principle that it's just about getting that kind of information down that's enough for you to re recognize what the thing is without having to go into all those details that kind of make it like a photograph so yeah hopefully you've taken something away from that and you can ha have a go at that yourself and keep practicing and find out different ways of making it easy for yourself to get the kind of information down so yeah thank you both very much for that part of the the exercise and um, we're going to do a little bit more on this subject um but moving on to the figure or portrait drawing this is going to be really so again, I'm going to be using Merce and Tuck to demonstrate this part of the challenge. And essentially, it's still automatic drawing, but we're going to try and draw each other. So I think the best way to do this, if you've got a mirror, we'll give you some options. So if you've got a mirror, you can have a go at drawing yourself. Or if you have somebody there with you, you can draw each other. And I think perhaps take it in turns, actually, because so, it just makes it a bit difficult if you're both kind of like looking up and down like this. So. I think Tuck and Merce, if you could take it in terms to draw each other, and I'll time it again. So I think I'll probably just get you to do a minute. And again, I want you to not look at the page. Obviously, your eyes have to be open this time. So, but I'll need you to just focus on your subject. So I think Merce, do you want to go first and have a go at drawing Tuck? And then following that, we'll get Tuck to draw Merce. And I will time you. And I think if you're at home and you don't have a mirror, um, perhaps you could draw me actually I'll just look into the camera and I'll sort of be your model whilst I kind of time the drawings that are happening here so I'll try and keep still and I'll look really really gormless but it's fine <laughs> I won't be offended if you tag me in the picture that you've drawn and it looks nothing like me that's the whole point that's great <laughs> as long as you kind of get the main information down but for this bit of the exercise as well it's the same principle so whether the subject is you or me or whoever it is you're drawing try and take in the information um, about that person's image that kind of makes them them. So there will be something, everybody's got kind of a unique trait or a unique feature that kind of you can pick out. Faces are so different and there's always something that you can kind of say, right, yeah, that element of them is what I need to get down to communicate that this is a picture of this person. So if you try and think about that before you enter into the drawing and same principle as before, just kind of focus on getting that element down and then the rest sort of comes together, but I think just try your best. And if somebody creates a portrait of you that you think is really, really unflattering, that, I mean, they've not looked at the page, so like, try not to be offended. But hopefully it'll just kind of loosen you up for the next bit of the actual live drawing exercise. So to begin, I'm gonna get ask, Tuck to, ask Merce to draw Tuck. And again, you can follow along at home. I'm gonna be your model if you don't have a mirror or a partner to draw. So same as before either looking at me or yourself in the mirror or your partner and not looking at the page. So don't cheat because that will ruin it. And we're going to just spend, and also you'll be tempted to look down because it's really, really weird and it's going to feel strange. But I think once you look down, you almost kind of like lose yourself and it kind of, you know, you might have to stop at that point, but just do your best anyway. And I will sort of time it roughly to be about a minute again, I think. So we'll begin by getting a piece of paper. I'm not going to draw this time, but get your paper and your implement ready. And I think if you, I mean, some people might find it easier to not do it this way, but I do think that with this part of the exercise, again, perhaps not taking your pen or your implement off the paper, just makes it a bit easier to kind of follow up, follow where you are on the page. And if you end up drawing across the face or anything, that's fine. It's all about just getting that information down and trying to communicate that person's image as simply and as quickly as you can. So we'll begin with Merce drawing Tuck. And let me just have a look at the time. Right, yeah. So I'll try and be still and stop you when we're ready to stop. OK, so let's go. Okay, I'm going to stop everyone because I think Merce is done. <laughs> so I think that's probably enough time. So 
take a look at um, what you've created. Should we have a look at yours? Or sh should we show them together at the same time, actually? So if Tuck does your portrait next, and then we can reveal at the same time. So when everybody's ready, if you... <laughs> There's some laughs off camera, so I'm excited to see how that turned out. Um, so if you could just get a, another clean sheet of paper. And also, I wanted to say, don't be afraid to work quite big, because I think that can make it a little bit easier. If you kind of work quite big, you can be a bit less precious about, you know, kind of getting very tiny details. You can just really kind of go for it and make big, bold marks, um, which I think is a really useful tool to get used to doing for life drawing in particular. So a fresh sheet of paper... And you can either have another go at, go at drawing me or yourself, or if you do have a partner in the room, perhaps you can switch and draw the other person draws you. Um, just kind of figure out a way to try and do something different. If you want to do the same thing again, I can pose again, and you can just kind of have a look at what you've done and figure out if there's a way that you can kind of do that again, but with a bit more confidence, or you know, use a different technique, whether that's taking your pen off the page or using the side of the charcoal or something just to kind of practice making these confident bold marks and drawing the human face so we're going to have another go in the studio and Tuck is going to draw Merce this time and when we've done this bit of the session we will show you the portraits that we've created for this part of the challenge so Tuck's ready beginning to draw Merce I'll be still so you can draw me again and we'll start now Do you feel we're about done? <laughs> that face says I'm not sure, but yeah. Okay, so we'll stop there. And if we could, Tuck and Mercy, if we could see the portraits that you did of each other with the automatic drawing technique, we'll just show them on here. So, <laughs> you can tell who's who, though, 100%. So this is Mercy as drawn by Tuck, and this is Tuck as drawn by Mercy. So I think... You know, regardless of the fact that obviously they're kind of cute childlike drawings as well, actually. Like, I think it kind of taps into that bit of your brain, which just is a bit more carefree because you don't have a choice because you can't see anything. Um, but hopefully you've had fun with that and did some interesting drawings at home, either of yourself, of me, or the person that was in the room with you. So, yeah, we're having a laugh in the studio just at these <laughs> depictions of people. But, yeah, this, um, I think this is a really, really important way of just kind of, like, loosening yourself up for a session like this so that you don't feel too um, precious and committed to things being a particular way. I mean, I do want you to take away from this some kind of um, technique-based skills in terms of proportions and things, and I will talk you through that as we move through the session. But also, I think whatever you create at the end of this session is completely valid and it's good and it's still art. So just kind of hoping that you take away this idea that um, art can, there's lots of different ways to interpret art and to make it. So yours is going to be totally different from somebody else's, but it's all valid and it's all really important as long as you get drawing and you kind of get practicing. So that's great. Thank you so much for these. Um, I'll talk you through the next part of the session. So we're going to move into the main part of the session, which is the actual...